Hello everyone, my name is Nicole and I am a teacher in the Midwest and today we're ready for video number three of my classroom setup. The first thing I'm noticing when walking in today is that I now have eight extra desks and eight extra chairs because like I've mentioned in my previous videos, um, I have a much bigger class last year than I do, um, or I've had a much, much smaller class last year than I do this year. So I'm noticing these desks, I need to find a place for those. Um, I brought in a lot of stuff from my Amazon wish list, um, and so I need to get all that put away. And just kind of the last minute stuff, a lot of like headings for my bulletin boards in the back and things like that. I've mentioned in past videos, like my last year's classroom setup, that I do have a board by my desk that's called My Why. Um, and it's where I just keep all of the things that remind me like why I became a teacher and just to be able to look at the board and see, you know, this is why I became a teacher. I have like letters from students, pictures of them, um, pictures of my personal kids and, um, you know, my coworkers coloring pages kids have made me just like anything and everything that reminds me why I do this job every day and when I walked in <laughs> almost all of it had fallen off and was on the floor I'll show you the area where my kids are at and I want to ask your opinion on something so I have my two kids pictures here now remember this isn't an actual bulletin board um I put tape on the back of this and on the back of the border so that it's kind of like a faux bulletin so I can't staple anything to it um and I just used tape on the back of this just like and pretty much everything had fallen off since the last time I was in so does anyone have any good ideas for how I can get um mainly like pictures and papers to stick to this without stapling because that's not an option um, and without ruining it. Let me know if you have any ideas for keeping pictures and papers and things on this. All right, I'm waiting for that laminator to heat up and in the meantime, I'm going to show you what I got from Amazon for my classroom this year. Okay, one of my coworkers got me these LED lights. Um, it was on my wish list. They just like stick to the board. And she got me some fruit snacks for the kids for snack. And then this is a um, pack of Play-Doh. I'm not gonna open it right now, but for bins in the morning. I went ahead and ordered myself some things. These are mag they're actually magnetic spice racks, but I'm hoping that they'll work on the yes they do. Um like I, I was thinking I could use them to hold like when I get a new book um or displaying things. So yeah, there's two of those in that package. And then I also went ahead and ordered the fluorescent light filters to put you put it over the lights hopefully that'll help me because i get headaches so i'm sure the kids do too sometimes oops um i'll save that for a minute in here um i got these brain flakes which is another thing just like recess slash something for the kids to play with same with the dominoes i got two packs of those um i got some updated new candy for my candy bin got just kind of like extra supplies that I feel like every year I grab um because my highlighters and scissors always go missing so I grabbed those and some eraser caps and then these are books that I'm so excited about I'm not done book shopping but I have um a student reading the super narwhal books um and so this one I could not find it last year and so I finally found it and I got it for her I mean it'll be in my library but she can read it my kids love the um, anything that's a book that has been changed into a graphic novel. I think this is the third Magic Tree House that has been changed into a graphic novel, so I had to pick up that for them. These are a couple books for the first couple days of school. Our class is a family, and a letter from your teacher on the first day of school. 
And then finally, this I learned about at a training, like a um, reading and writing training, Gifts from the Gods. And it's to help with roots, like Greek and Latin roots. And basically, um, it goes through and tells you stories about the gods and then why the words um, have stuck, basically. And so I think it'll be easier for the kids to remember. So example, like echo, and it tells you repetition of a sound by reflection of sound waves from a surface. And then it like has a quote from the story. So I am excited to use this and hopefully that'll help with um, keeping those Greek and Latin roots in their memory permanently. <laughs> Just trying to put some of the older candy on the top <laughs> so they eat that older stuff first. Um, but yeah, I need to get some more dum dums too. I noticed last year the kids loved like the more sour stuff than chocolate. Like they liked the Skittles, they like Smarties, um, the little dum dum suckers, and Starburst. So I got a pack of that, but I need to get some dum dum suckers as well. Because those, those were a big hit last year too. This is my recess slash morning bin area. And what I mean by morning bins is that when the students come in in the morning, um, they can pick a bin and it's like a soft start to the day. So for example, th this has like tiny Jenga pieces in it. Um, and so I'm always looking to add to this collection because the more bins I have, um, the less students are going to be crowded around, you know, one bin. And certainly some bins are more popular than others. Last year my kids really liked the squig, the squigs. Um, so the more that I can get added, <laughs> the better. But now I have some actual, some full-size dominoes. These are like really tiny dominoes. Um, but the kids still play with them. But now I'm going to add the normal size dominoes as well. Okay, brain flakes. My students last year did not play with them a ton, but now they have more. So maybe they will be more into it with so many to choose from. So just to kind of show you some of the other bins that I have, these are those um, like Picasso tiles, those magnetic ones. These are just so expensive. Like this pack costs like $30 and it, I thought it had more than this, but that's literally all it had in it. Oh, there's a brain flake in the wrong one. I also have a bin of like Hot Wheels cars and sometimes the boys will like to set up like ramps with those. I have Legos and like a big one here. This is Play-Doh, although all the Play-Doh got dried out last year. And so I'm so glad that I got that new Play-Doh from my coworker because now I'll put that in there. I also have these, um, these are actually math manipulatives, like number blocks is what my personal kids call them, if your kids watch the show. But um, they're just like blocks that connect on all the sides and they have them in like rainbow colors. Um, but I still need a bin for those because I just got those with the new math series. I also have some kinetic sand. That is a, um, you have to ask me before you can use that because it makes quite the mess. But yeah, so this is just only like two years worth of collecting. So I'm hoping each year I get a little bit more um, to make it, you know, lots of options for the kids. I do have cards as well. I think that's pretty much all. I'm going to start laminating my name tags for my students. Um, I have a bunch of different ones. Basically, the pack that I bought on Teachers Pay Teachers, which I'll link below, has, um, yeah, she had like so many options. And so I thought I'd do a little mix um, because the ones I liked were kind of girly. For example, this one um, has like a cheetah rainbow on it or even this one with like the cheetah apple. Um, and some boys might get it, but there's a few boys that are like, might get weird about it. So I did find like this one, which is a little more neutral. Um, and even this one, it's like a peachish tannish color, um, as well as this one is just straight up like cheetah print. I don't know if boys 
<laughs> like that one but I think I found a couple options for the boys who do care um they'll be able to have one that uh, that they're comfortable with lamination are all of my like headings for my boards um so this is my schedule that's gonna go um the top of this schedule i have one for extra math which is a program we use for um practicing multiplication facts on my i ready board in the back i need a section for math and reading so i have those pages here and then i have my leaderboard as well Oh, and then my multiplication and division, um, which goes with extra math. So once I get this all laminated and cut out, I can put up all of my headings. Um, and that's going to just kind of make it look even more put together and closer to being done. name tags that are already made at the teacher store um, write on them with Sharpie and then have them laminated but this year I'm obviously doing it completely different so I printed them myself um, laminated them first and then the plan is to write on these with Sharpie and then if for some reason a student moves or um, they decide they want a nickname used instead then you just take a dry erase marker right over the Sharpie and then it'll erase um, I'm left-handed and so I do a lot of smearing so anytime I'm writing on a dry erase board like a dry erase calendar or anything I like to use a sharpie it just doesn't smear um, as much as the dry erase and then when I'm ready to change it it's the trick the trick is old as time use the dry erase marker over the sharpie to get rid of the sharpie <laughs> notice the bluish tint here and that is because I've went ahead and put the light covers so let me show you what those look like here this is still needing a little bit of work um, but we've got my eye ready sign reading on the left math on the right um, and with the object of this is supposed to be the kid's name is down here when they get five between five to ten minutes they move their name up into the five to ten minute range and then once they get to 11 to 20 you know what I'm saying um, and they're not lined up <laughs> right now so I need a little more work on that but at least the stuff is all cut out ready to go leaderboard jobs um, now at this point I'm just kind of waiting on stuff to be laminated at the school laminator. This I went ahead and put the map up and then these are student suggestions of books. Um, last year I just had them um, do a copy of the cover and then they just wrote a little blurb about the book and why they like it. All right, it's been another successful day in the classroom. I got a lot done and tomorrow is going to be my last setup day. So you have one more part of this video left. I'll see you in a minute. And we are back at it for the final day of my classroom setup for the 22-23 school year. 
I am in a very, very happy mood because when I came in, um, a bunch of my stuff has been laminated by the school's laminator. So someone was so kind enough to um, turn on the laminator and get it all laminated. I'm assuming one of our custodians did that. So that's amazing. That means I can get these last few things done, which is my classroom jobs and my calendar were the two big ones. So I'm going to get started on those right away. Hopefully I don't have to be in here too long this evening. The only calendar I could find that was even somewhat close to my theme is this um, black and white striped and then it has like rainbow colors. Um, I already cut off up here where it was like super rainbow colors. You can kind of see um, the excess of that there. But in order to fix this, I've printed out my own um, calendar. Days of the week that match better um, with my theme. So I'm gonna just staple those right on here and change it from rainbow to boho. Some of the jobs are doubled up and um, take two people to complete them. But that way when at the end of the day, when it's time to like clean up and get all the jobs done, everyone has something to do. No one's just sitting there. Everyone's up helping. And I always tell the kids like, this takes maybe one or two minutes of your time. But if I had to do all these jobs at the end of the day, it would probably take me like 30 to 45 minutes. Um, and so they're normally pretty good about helping. Nothing is, like I said, nothing, none of the jobs take more than a minute or two. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just gonna cut these out and I'll talk in a few minutes once I get the uh, jobs up on the board, kind of what, what they mean. goo on the back of the classroom jobs which means normally you put a little goo on it and you let it sit like for quite a while to just get a little bit harder and then you stick it onto the board so um i'm going to show you my jobs now um before i put them up because they're going to have to sit with that tacky glue on them for quite a while um i have a calendar clerk this person updates the calendar for me each month um like the big calendar so they'll erase the numbers and put the new numbers on it I have a snack helper. They walk around with a basket and hand out the snack for the day, which is already pre-packaged into small Ziploc bags, so they're not actually handling the food. Our specials specialist changes the name of the specials on the board each day. So if we have PE on Monday and then Art Tuesday, then Monday afternoon at the end of the day, they will change the specials to Art for Tuesday. Um, the floor monitor just cleans up any trash on the floor at the end of the day. Our light monitor turns the lights off when we leave the classroom. Crate carrier takes a crate full of water bottles out to recess each day. It mainly, that's like mainly when it's hot out. Our equipment manager carries out the um, recess equipment. Door holder holds the door open for the class when we go out to recess and when we come in. Our tech team helps with our Chromebooks, getting them um, charged, making sure that students aren't forgetting their chargers at the end of the day. Trash removal. Um, these students take the trash out of our classroom and put a new trash bag in. 
pencil sharpener, self-explanatory, I would think. Again, board eraser, pretty self-explanatory. The teacher's assistant just kind of runs errands for me, um, helps me out with things. It's normally a very trustworthy student. The gardener waters are plants you can see behind me. Um, I have a couple of like succulent aloe back there. Attendant secretary, they tell me in the morning who is not here for the day. Um, I have a check-in system when the kids walk in where they have a magnet with their um, number on it and they pick whether they are packing their lunch or eating school lunch. And that also serves as attendance because whoever is still left over who hasn't moved their magnet, they're obviously not here. Our librarian takes books that students are finished reading and puts them back into our classroom library, library baskets. Our absent attendant, I've used this two different ways in the past. I've used it where um, any, if there's someone absent for a different job, the absent person, the job that's the absence attendance person um, does their job for them. Or I've used it where they keep track of the students who are absent for the day, like making sure that they collect a worksheet that I pass out and put one on a desk of a student who's absent as well. Cubby cleaner, they go in the cubby area, make sure there's nothing on the floor at the end of the day. The vacuum helper just helps. We have like a little, um, I call it a hokey, but it's like a, <laughs> you just move it around on the carpet and it kind of collects the dirt, kind of. The binder helper, we have data binders for all of our students in this classroom. And um, since the binders are kind of big, I don't have the students keep those in their desk or their cubby. So the binder helper passes the binders out and recollects them when we're done using them. Our schedule tracker um, keeps us on track throughout the day. They will remove the pieces of the schedule from the board. So once we're done with reading, they can go up and take reading down and then the kids just see what's left for the day. Our mail person um, separates the mail out when I'm done grading it to hand it back to students. Um, the paper organizer, this is used a couple of ways. If I need someone to hand out papers, I would have this person do it. But also when my students turn in their papers, um, I will normally have someone, the paper organizer, put the um, papers in number order and then put a paper clip on it and then also put a post-it on the top that says who was absent that day. And that way if I get a little behind on grading and I'm missing a student's paper in the packet, I know like, oh, well, this student wasn't there that day because their name is written on the post-it. Um, and then helping hands, this is just kind of leftover um, to help out with anything at the end of the day that needs done. Um, if, you know, we need, if we have a lot, if it's the day of our Valentine's party or what we call our friendship party, there's usually a lot of extra bags of trash on that day. So we might need um, an extra person to help with the trash. Or um, if some, you know, in the past we used to have like a recycling bin and it would get really heavy sometimes. And so we might want some extra kids with that. So this is just basically anyone else who needs help with their job. Um, if the male person gets behind, they might want someone's help with that. So yes, and I love that the colors are all matching the theme in my room as well. My time here is coming to an end. I just got an exciting message that our class lists are now officially online. I have 30 kids, um, so just about what I expected and I only have 28 desks in my room. So um, I'll have to wait until the custodians are here because right now it's like 7.30 at night. Um, so there are no custodians here to find me a couple more desks, but I will need two more desks to fit everyone in here. Um, and in the meantime, I went ahead and got my job board put together. My only concern is that it's a little busy, but I'll show you and you can tell me what you think about it. Okay, here it is. Oh, got a little piece falling off. I love like the colors and I decided to just kind of do like randomly spread them out. Um, but I'll fix this one. The, uh goal will be I'll write the kids names on here and so you know whatever your name is above so like you know let's say this is Lucas then that means that Lucas is the board racer um so yeah it there I mean it's busy but also I have 30 kids so I had to have 30 names for kids so hopefully it's not too busy I still like I really like the color scheme and how that's going 
Um, and it looks good next to my calendar because it all the colors all kind of tie in together. My leaderboard, I can't really do anything with that until we start taking like tests and things. I started kind of um, drawing out where my lines would be for these, but again, these aren't sticking very well either. So I might just have to bite the bullet and buy some more magnets um, instead of using the tack it on jelly gooey stuff. <laughs> um, Magnets might be my best bet. And for right now, I'm leaving this blank just to put some anchor charts on, like beginning of the year anchor charts. Um, eventually, it'll probably be something where the kids can keep track of some sort of goals or something like that. But I'm loving this back area. I feel like the theme um, with those colors and the white go really well together. So, yeah. I am at a point now where pretty much the only things that I have left are to write my students' names on things. Like I need to write their names on their name tags for their desk, um, write their names on their classroom jobs, um, write their names on my birthday chart, all of that stuff, which I don't really want to put their names on YouTube <laughs> just to be safe. I know it's just first names, but just to be safe. Um, so that means I am pretty much done, um, with this video. <laughs> I feel really good. I think that maybe in a couple weeks, um, after I have the kids in here and see what works and what doesn't, I'll probably do a full classroom tour for you. So I won't do, um, anything too detailed right at this moment, but I will just do a quick walk around, um, so you can see the end result all right, we walk in and have our welcome area, pencil sharpener area, um, my whiteboard, which has a few <laughs> lists on it that I've been working on, um, my Y board over there, and my desk, um, the big bulletin up here that's pretty much math stuff, the reading board in the back, reading takes us places, is kind of like my, that's why I always put the map over the books and then this back area which you've seen a million times but yeah that's pretty much the overview of the classroom at this point um there's just little things to do and i still do have um back to school night and teacher work day so i technically have two days but i won't be able to record those days um so this is gonna be it I so hope that you enjoyed coming on this journey with me, getting my classroom ready for the new school year. Um, it was a new theme, so it took a lot longer than it would normally take me, but I got it done. I feel good about it. I love the new theme. When I walk in the classroom, I just feel good. I feel like it's light and airy um, and cutesy, which is what I wanted. I wanted a space that um, felt really good to me since I'm in here so very much. Um, so if you got any ideas from this, if you have any tips or tricks for me, please share those in the comments. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. And like I said, I will hopefully be posting a complete classroom tour that's a little more detailed, get into a little bit of the processes that go on in my classroom. Um, so if you want to make sure you see that video, then you will want to subscribe to my channel as well and click the bell because that will let you know anytime I post a new video. All right, I think that's it. Bye guys, thanks for joining me.